thought I'd give you a view of beautiful rural Buckinghamshire here in the heart of England that really is everything that William Blake, Turner and the rest of them, Elgar, wrote about. This is it, this is the heart of England. It's a very special and magical place. I'm here at Horwood House, an unfortunate name, or maybe not. Uh, not far from Milton Keynes, but in the middle of the countryside. A beautiful resort hotel, and we're having AV9 here. And uh, my slot is later today, as usual. Uh, in or Crane has put on a phenomenal conference. Uh, it's it's just full of like love and beautiful people, and the, you know, it just it's like a big family, and it's it's just wonderful. It's it has to be the best conference in the world. Well, the best one I've been to anyway. And uh, unfortunately, the Christians have tried to attempt the coup to take it over. Not overtly, but again, this is, you know, as you know me, this is my main problem with the alternative scene is that it's still, it's still infected by Christianity and Christian ideals while pretending to be the solution. And the Bible Belt stuff still deeply infects into it and it you know these people are entitled to their opinion but they act like it's the it's the default opinion for humanity my slot will be later on this afternoon and I'll politely as usual put them straight on that that they can't be imposing their Christian views on others as if it is the the answer or the only answer now I, yeah, this, the word Satanism has been thrown around a fair bit to, to describe Catholic priests raping young boys. Note that Christians, Muslims in the north of England, raping in, in Rotherham, raping young girls in sex gangs. No, they're Muslims. And so and so and so, the Abrahamics and so and so and from the Middle East. That's, that's, don't call them Satanists. Don't, don't, uh, don't dirty the name of Satanists by associating them with Christians and other Abrahamic monsters. Now, one of the things that's been put forward is this idea of prayer. Not every one or two people have put it forward. One directly, I think there's a big misunderstanding here. Prayer does not work. Prayer is a complete and utter failure. Now, it may have a soothing or a psychologically calming element to it. Of course it does. But it does not get you anything you want. So when you pray for something, you put yourself in a state of subservience. So please, holy God, big Jewish sky fairy, give me what I want, please. Well, you've already, you have submitted to an imaginary force that's no more real than the Joker in Batman. And you have put yourself in a position where you've created an inhibition or an inhibitory uh, energetic force that stops you from getting it because because of the mere act of requ requesting that way you've automatically put yourself in a position of maybe is it it could be possible when you want something you must absolutely desire it with all your heart even the secret is things like that although they, they're based on kind of sound principles they're not right the first thing is, if you want something, if you desire something, you have to want it completely. And I don't mean that in a kind of a selfish way. Remember, it's the universe exists to make you happy. It does no other purpose. It wants to play with you and dance in tandem with your subconscious and your conscious desires. It wants to help you. It's it, these, it, these inhibitory ideas of prayer and gods and religions and morals are what get in the way of these, uh, these, these manifestations of your desires. But what you need to do is make a sacrifice. Now, I can hear all you Christians going, oh, sacrifice, they're going to burn virgins under my... You know, see, you, uh, you kill, annihilate the Abrahamic Christian inside you. Destroy it as you would a virus, okay? What you have to do is, you have to make a sacrifice of something in the universe to attain something. So for example, you want, I don't know, suppose you want your friend who's sick to get better. Well, you must make a sacrifice. You must make a sacrifice to the universe, the cosmos, or your archetypal gods. Remember Thor and Odin and the Morrigan and Vishnu, they don't actually exist. They're 
they're encapsulations of forces of reality, uh, of nature, that are put into a, an archetypal form that can communicate directly with your subconscious mind, because your subconscious mind is older than your conscious mind. It existed from a time before language came about, so it deals in symbols, allegories, dreams, metaphor, mythology, and so on. So. When you've killed the Christian inside you, when you have crucified and, and buried non resurrectory the Christ consciousness, the greatest lie the Roman Empire ever fostered upon humanity inside you, you're then in a position to, to make a sacrifice. So you, give, well, what, you, don't, you, know, you don't kill people, you don't kill animals. A sacrifice can be merely giving money to a homeless person. A sacrifice can be giving up your time to help an elderly person. Yeah, a sacrifice could be, say you follow a certain sports team. Instead of watching the sports team play a big game, you turn off the TV or you don't go to the stadium and then you go downtown and you help people. You show kindness to people. You get involved in a community thing. You do good deeds. You help people. And that, what that does then is you have allowed a kind of a, a vacuum to form between you and your intentions and the inhibitions are sucked out of it. You know what I'm saying? They're sucked out of it. And when these inhibitions are sucked out of it, that then allows the, the desire to come towards you because all energy is neutral at the point of zero. If you read my book, Sorcery, you know all about this. When you desire something, you have it. There's no progression of one to 10, you're immediately at 10. What stops you from getting it is that you and your psychology and your neuroses and your conditional programming and your religion and your self-doubts and your, your lack of self-belief puts barriers or inhibitors towards you and, what, and pushes it away from you. Sacrifice is a beautiful method of clearing those inhibitions and bringing it for you because the, the universe will never reward a selfish soul. The universe only rewards a soul that has an exchange of energy. You give, you take, you take, you give. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect accounting system and all books are settled at the end of the day. And that's how you get what you want. You don't say, please, you know, Jesus, sky fairy, imaginary man uh, who didn't exist, please give me this. You say you don't need him. Now in pagan times, people would do things like take their favorite sword, bend it in half and throw it into the water. That was a tremendous sacrifice because you were taking away not only something that would have been incredibly expensive and desirable, but also the means to defend yourself. You threw the sword and that's what the allegory of King Arthur taking the sword from the lake, the lady of the lake, the sacrifice was being returned. The sword was symbolically being returned to King Arthur Remember, these are not real people. We have to understand mythology and allegory and metaphor are the keys to salvation. And it, 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 he was given the sword as a sac his sacrifice was being returned. You threw it out into the universe, it came back from the universe. And that's how you get what you want. Now, you won't get things that, that you're greedy for. So if you just say, I want you know, X amount of money so I can go spend it on prostitutes and cocaine, you might get it, but you'll end up in prison or AIDS or something like that. You'll get an, an ironic or a, the, the, the universe is a trickster too. You know, the universe is a trickster as well. So uh, yes, so that's it. If you want anything you desire, forget about praying and begin sacrificing. And uh, you'll be amazed. And also be aware that there's nothing to stop you between. Now, of course, it's it's within your limitations. If you you know, I, there's no way I'm ever going to win the, the the hundred meter sprint at the Olympics. I might in the next life, but in this one I can't. But I'll, 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 I'll something I want, some work done on the house, a repair, a tradesperson I need, something like that to do to do something like that, or to help a friend out. That you will get because that's, that's, a, that's an honest sacrifice. And again, I will give something in order to get it. Energy is, it works on an exchange and a one-to-one -one basis. And there's no, there's no free lunch in the universe and that's why prayer doesn't work. So uh, I will leave this with a, a beautiful shot of the heart of England. And you ponder that for a second. Out there, out there, on England's green, he never walked. And he never walked in Palestine either. Odin, Krom, Freyr, Thor, 
Morrigan, Duma Bavate, Vishnu. That's what's out there, but it's not real. They're just archetypal forces.